Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So you might have noticed, or maybe you didn't notice, I kind of took like a two, three week break from my channel. That was entirely unintentional. <laughs> Pretty much all of January, my health has been really bad. I've talked briefly and vaguely about the fact that I have a chronic illness. And for the most part, it's something that I'm able to manage and still go out my day-to-day -day life. <laughs> But I don't I don't know why lately it's just been completely unmanageable and it's just like I don't know It's tough. It's hard I don't like that I haven't posted in almost two weeks because I have so like there's been so many videos that I've wanted to film and post like I wanted to vlog during smutathon I wasn't able to do that I have some other like reading challenge vlogs that I've wanted to do there's just so much that I've been wanting to do and like I physically have been unable to I don't know it just put me in like a really bad place for the past couple weeks but today this morning I woke up and it's the first day that I woke up feeling okay <laughs> so I'm I'm really trying to capitalize on this day and I kind of wanted to do like a self-care day or like a bookish self-care day where I just treat myself nice, read some books, film some videos, do the things that I really love to do that I have been unable to do. So yeah, that's what this video is gonna be. It's just gonna be like a really chill vlog. I have a couple books that I'm reading. I'm just like determined to make this a good day. <laughs> um, so I apologize if this video is a little bit like boring or lackluster, but I did want to show, I got a couple birthday gifts. I've already reached out to them and thanked them, but I did want to show them on my channel. So the first book that I got was The First Girl Child by Amy Harmon. This was sent to me by Melissa from She Is An Open Book, who I just adore so much. And this is a fantasy romance that I've been really excited about. And it's about this land that has been cursed where no one is able to have any daughters, so only men are born. And it follows this guy who has been gifted with inhuman strength, but he is then tasked, the first girl in like 20 years is born, and it is his sworn duty to protect her. And they have a romance, so it's totally like a fantasy bodyguard romance, which I love bodyguard romances so much. So I'm really, really excited to get to this. So thank you so much, Melissa. And then the other two that I got were My Fake Rake by Eva Lee, or Eva Lay, Eva Lay. I have really been wanting to read books by this author. All of her books sound really, really good. And it's about this woman who really wants to catch the attention of this guy. So she has one of her colleagues pretend to court her so that the other guy gets jealous and like, you know, like wants her. So it's totally like a historical fake dating relationship. I'm really excited for it. And then the other one is The Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics by Olivia Waite. And this is a historical female-female romance that I've been dying to read. And I'm just like in love with this cover so pretty um and these were sent to me by veronica so thank you so much veronica and then i did get a couple books for myself i got a couple uh romance books that were on sale so the first one i got is enthralled by gianna darling this is the first book in this dark romance series. I literally know nothing about it except for my friend Kenya read it and when she was telling me about it I was like I need to read that because I'm either going to love it or absolutely hate it. <laughs> I don't really remember what it's about. I think it has something to do with like a girl being sold. We'll see. I've heard good things about it. And then the other one I got is My Life in Shambles by Karina Halley. So this is about a woman who makes a resolution to say yes to adventures and that leads her to end up being fake engaged to one of Ireland's top rugby players players. So yeah, that sounds good. I love Karina Halley so much. And then the last one I got myself is Come Tumbling Down by Sean and McGuire. This is the fifth book in the Wayward Children series and I have not read this yet. I've been saving it because I didn't want to read it when I was feeling bad because I didn't want to like associate my bad feelings with this series, but I am planning to do a 24 hour readathon where I binge the whole series and then read this one for the first time. And so I should be doing that soon, TBD, we'll see. But I'm definitely excited to reread the whole series. And then the last book I have was sent to me by the publisher from Avon, and that is The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa. Um, and it's about this woman who had a failed 
wedding and so now she gets this really big like job opportunity but she has to work with her ex-fiance's brother i'm excited i've heard good things about it and this one i don't actually know if, is this out i can't remember i don't i'm not sure if this is out yet i know avon sends um finished copies before the book comes out so this might be out already or it might not unsure so now i think i'm gonna go get starbucks and maybe like a, a little treat or dessert something. And then when I get back, I will show you guys the two books that I am currently reading. Who's a good boy in the car? <laughs> Every time I come to Starbucks, it's always the same two girls working at the drive-thru. <laughs> and this time she was like, oh my God, you look so pretty. And that's 100% because usually when I come here, I look like a bum with no hair and makeup done. All right. Got my Starbucks. If anyone is wondering, I got a white chocolate mocha. That is like my go-to staple drink. I usually will try all of their new drinks when they come out. I think I've tried almost every coffee drink that Starbucks has, and this is just always the one that I go back to. It's my favorite, my tried and true. Loki is very tired because we went on a little walk before we went into the car because if I don't take him on a walk before the car, he has like all this pent up energy and he's just trying to like jump all over, even though he has a seatbelt, which, <laughs> Oh my god, that's another thing. Every time I've shown Loki in the car, he has been in his seatbelt. And I'll still have people being like, oh my god, it's so unsafe to not have a dog in a seatbelt. Y'all just need to stop, okay? Think a minute before you comment things. But he'll just get super hyper in the car, so I usually try to tire him out before then. So, the books that I'm currently reading, um, I'm reading two at the moment. Um, let me get them out of my bag. So the first one I'm reading, I started reading this on a day when I was feeling like the worst. And I just, I wanted to listen, I started listening to the audiobook because I wanted to listen to something that was just light and fun and that would like bring me out of my dark mood. So I started Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. And this is a book that I got from Book of the Month. I think I got this as my birthday gift because during your birthday month, you get to pick a free book. And this was the one I picked and I'm halfway through it. And so far I am loving it it is so cute it's about this woman who becomes among one of the first female students at oxford and she's part of this suffrage group and in the group they're basically like targeting influential men and trying to like get them on their side and one of the guys that she runs into is duke montgomery um and he's like a very like high up person in the british political system and yeah so far i really like it where i finished off reading they just had like their first physical encounter and it was really good i'm enjoying it the other book i'm reading i am buddy reading with melanie and we are reading the guinevere deception by kirsten white melanie got this for me for christmas so of course i had to to buddy read it with her. So this is a King Arthur Merlin retelling, but it takes place from the point of view of Guinevere. And she has come to Camelot under the guise of marrying King Arthur, but in reality, she was actually sent there by Merlin to protect him. And yeah, I'm not that far into it yet, but so far I'm really enjoying it. The first sentence of the first chapter really had me excited. It says, there was nothing in the world as magical and terrifying as a girl on the cusp of womanhood. I'm invested so far, so hopefully I like the rest of it. So these are the two books that I will be reading today. I'm not going to finish this one today because we have like a scheduled buddy read, but hopefully I will finish this one today, which I definitely feel like I can. I think I'm going to listen to the Guinevere Deception first. I am listening to it on audio as well as physically reading it. I'm listening to it on Libro FM, uh, which the app looks like that right there. I talked about Libro FM briefly in one of my other videos, but I hadn't really used it yet, so I wasn't like fully talking about it. But basically, Libro FM is an audiobook website that is very comparable to Audible. It's the same price. It has like all the same books except for the Audible exclusive ones. But instead of your monthly membership going to Amazon, it supports independent bookstores. And when you sign up, you can actually choose which bookstore you wanna support. So if you have like a local bookstore near you, you can choose that bookstore. For example, for me, the bookstore that I chose is Book People, which is a really big independent bookstore here in Austin. And yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far. I like the app. One of the biggest things that I look for in like an audiobook service is if you can change the playback speed. And on this one, you can change it a lot. <laughs> like 
there's all the different variables and I really really like that that's like the number one thing that will get me to use an audiobook service even more than the price because I can't listen to audiobooks if they're less than two times speed I'm sorry I cannot do it that is too slow but yeah so far I'm liking the service I'm not like affiliated directly with them I do have um, a link in the description um, that you can get your first month for free I'm not a hundred percent sure <laughs> I'm gonna have to double check I cannot remember also another thing that's really cool about Libro FM is if you are some sort of like book influencer if you have a channel or a blog or whatever you can become like an influencer on their service and you just apply to it and like you tell them your credentials or whatever and if they approve you you get audiobook arcs so every month there'll be like certain audiobooks that come out that month that you can listen to for free which is really nice some of the ones that i got in the past were the starless sea get a life chloe brown the deep they have some good ones so if you are like an influencer i would definitely recommend looking into that because it's pretty cool i know no other service i know of does that i know netgalley is trying to come out with um audiobook arcs which i'm so excited for because literally what the number one reason why i don't get to arcs as quickly as I would like to is because I primarily listen to audiobooks and it's hard for me to read physically without an audiobook. So yeah, I'm gonna start the Guinevere Deception and read the uh, the pages that Melanie and I have for today. And I think I'm gonna do, I did this in my Spookathon vlogs and I do this all the time when I read. I will set a timer for however long I wanna read, whether it's 30 minutes or an hour. And then I put my phone on do not disturb so that I'm like, reading for that amount of time and I'm completely undistracted and it really helps even if you're just doing it for like 15 minutes 15 minutes of uninterrupted time is like so precious <laughs> so yeah I'm gonna do an hour and then I'll check back in and we'll talk about the book So I just read for a little bit over an hour actually and I am now about a hundred pages into the Guinevere Deception and I'm really enjoying it. I don't feel like I'm super gripped by the story yet. I could take a break right now and I don't feel like I need to like keep reading. I will keep reading because I am buddy reading it <laughs> and I am enjoying it. I'm just not like this is the best thing ever I have to keep reading. Which is fine. It is, however, really making me want to rewatch Merlin. That is like one of my favorite TV shows, and I never finished it. <laughs> Surprise, I didn't finish a show. I watched everything except for the last couple of episodes. I know how it ends. I was spoiled before I ever even watched the show. And I think that is part of the reason why I never finished it, because I'm just like, I'm not, I'm not ready you know but this is definitely making me want to rewatch it and like finally finish it because that show was so good i think it's definitely my favorite arthurian story or adaptation morgana in that show is everything oh my god not only is that actress just like one of my number one celebrity crushes but like the character of morgana her arc throughout that show was like so good. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna keep reading more of this. I am gonna have to take a break sometime soon because I'm going to watch The Witcher with my friends. We started watching that show when it came out in December and we only watched three episodes and I was really loving it and like so excited to keep watching and then with the holidays and everything, we haven't really had a chance to continue watching it. This is a testament to how fucking good of a friend I am. I have not watched without them. I've been so tempted every day when I log into Netflix, it's like right there, continue watching The Witcher and I have self-control, I don't do it. So yeah, we're gonna start watching more of it tonight and I'm really excited for that. I also, before I forget, I wanna take a moment because I haven't really acknowledged it on any of my social media but the booktube awards are going on right now and I was nominated for captivating vlogger I haven't really like said anything about it or been like promoting it or like asking people to vote for me because I just don't that's not really my style I'm not really comfortable doing that I did just want to like say that I'm very grateful for anybody who nominated me and then voted for me the past like couple weeks I felt so disconnected from the community 
community and there's this weird thing that happens with like I don't know if other people experience this where you know when you have like this sort of platform some days you feel like you're so connected and you have so many friends and so many supporters and it's like the support is overwhelming but then on the flip side you ha there's other times where you just feel so isolated and like nobody cares and like you're irrelevant <laughs> so seeing that i made it into the second round of the nominations was just like very nice and i really appreciated it and it made me feel good that people were voting for me and recognizing me obviously like i don't know how many people voted for me it could have been like three people voted for me and that somehow made it enough for me <laughs> to continue on but like even if it was just three people i'm still thankful for it and like I know I'm not gonna win. It's not, that's not what it's about. I just wanted to say thank you if you voted for me or even if you didn't vote for me, if there was somebody else in that category that you liked better, that's cool too. Good morning. So it is now Sunday and I have completed both of the books. So I kind of just wanted to give you my thoughts on them. Even though I'm not really considering this like a proper reading vlog because it was much more just me like info dumping everything that's been in my mind for the past couple weeks but okay i ended up giving both of them four stars i'll start with bringing down the duke i really enjoyed this i mean i i knew that i would because it's very rare that i read historical romance and don't enjoy it there's something very comforting to me about historical romance which is why i typically pick it up when i'm feeling bad and i want something to cheer me up they're usually very light and comedic and wholesome. I don't know if wholesome is the right word because there's definitely like historical romances that are super smutty. I don't mean wholesome in the sense that like they're tame. I just get like a like a warm feeling whenever I read them, you know? And I really loved how this was centered around the suffrage movement and the first female students at Oxford. The romance between them kind of reminded me of the romance in the Veronica Speedwell series, which is like one of my favorite series. But in that series, the romance takes like four books to develop into anything. Um, so this one was like a more condensed version i feel like of that romance of just like two intellectuals debating things and like finding common ground and like really growing to respect each other i don't know i really liked this um and i cannot wait for the next book i'm assuming this is going to be like a companion series with some of the other women that were in this suffrage movement so then the gwen of your deception i really went back and forth on if this was going to be 3.5 or four stars. I'm leaning towards four stars, but it's kind of in the middle. It's like a 3.75 if I'm being precise, but I don't really like to do <laughs> that much. The first half wasn't the most engaging. The first half of the book, really not much happened. I felt like the main character was kind of just floating and didn't really have purpose, but I enjoy this world and these characters so much. There's such a big like nostalgic factor for me when it comes to Arthurian stories because I just, I grew up with those legends and some of my favorite movies were ones that were Arthurian adaptations. So I just felt like very nostalgic reading it. So even though my attention wasn't like 100% focused in the first half, I was still enjoying it. Like there was never a point where I wasn't enjoying this book. It just wasn't the most engaging at the beginning. I would say it definitely picked up in the second half. There's a couple like twists and reveals that I didn't see coming that I was so excited for. Um, if you've read this book, you can probably guess who my favorite character is, but I can't say it because it's a spoiler, but I'm very excited to see more of that character. I definitely think this is going to be one of those series that gets better hopefully, fingers crossed, in the, in the other books, like further down the line, because this one was really like setting up the scene, introducing us to the players, and there's still, at the end of this book, there's still a lot of unanswered questions. So like the second half was an easy four stars. The first half was more like three stars. So I guess I'm gonna even it out at 3.5 stars. I did really enjoy it and it was super entertaining. I would say it was really fun. So yeah, four stars. 3.5, four stars. I enjoyed both of these. These were definitely uh, comfort reads, I would say, that I really needed at the moment. You know, this was just like a lighthearted, fun, historical romance with hijinks. And then this was a fun, entertaining fantasy with 
characters that I've loved for my whole life. <laughs> so these were definitely like two of the books that I desperately needed at the moment. That is where I'm gonna end today's vlog. Again, I'm sorry for my lack of content the past couple weeks. Hopefully going forward, that is going to change. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.